A seismic shift is underway in the global skies, and this time, it didn't take off from Seattle or Toulouse. It took off from Shanghai. Meet the C-929, China's newest widebody jet, now officially airborne and poised to challenge the decades-long dominance of Boeing and Airbus. Developed by the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, or COMAC, the C-929 isn't just an airplane, it's a symbol of ambition, autonomy and technological might. For decades, commercial aviation has been a two-player game. Boeing and Airbus have locked down long-haul travel with their flagship widebody jets, the 787 Dreamliner and the A350. But as of 2025, that's changing. Real quick, if you're into videos that cut through the noise and break things down clearly, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps more people find this, and if you're not subscribed yet, now's a good time. We've got more deep dives coming your way. Also, drop a comment and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your take. Now onto the video. The C929 has entered its flight testing phase, marking a turning point in aviation history. It's not a concept, it's not a prototype, it's flying and it's built almost entirely in China. This massive aircraft can carry up to 280 passengers across intercontinental distances, rivaling anything Boeing or Airbus currently offer. But the real story isn't just about range or passenger capacity, it's about power, economic power, technological power, and political power. With this aircraft, China isn't simply participating in the aerospace industry, it's declaring itself ready to lead. The launch of the C929 marks a dramatic escalation in what has quietly become one of the most strategic races of the 21st century, the battle for the skies. So how did China get here? How did a nation, once dependent on foreign designs, now create a jet that rivals the best of the West? And what does this mean for the future of global aviation? Let's begin at the beginning, where ambition met strategy and a new aerospace era was born. The story of the C929 doesn't begin with global headlines or billion dollar deals. It begins with a far humbler aircraft, the Comac C999. Introduced as a narrowbody jet meant for domestic routes, the C999 was China's first real step toward aerospace self-reliance. With a capacity of about 150 passengers and a range suited for regional flights, it was never meant to dethrone Boeing or Airbus. But it was meant to prove that China could play the game, and it did. Despite criticism from Western observers, the C-999 entered commercial service and achieved significant domestic adoption. More importantly, it gave Comac the experience and the confidence to aim higher, much higher. Enter the C-929. Designed from the ground up as a wide-body aircraft, the C-929 was never intended to be a niche product. It was built to fly long-haul international routes, Beijing to London, Shanghai to New York, with the capacity and performance to compete directly with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and Airbus A350. With a maximum range of around 12,000 kilometers and seating for up to 280 passengers, this was not a modest upgrade. It was a bold statement. The routes of the C929 stretch back to 2015, when China launched the project under the banner of a joint venture with Russia. The aircraft was originally branded as the CR929, a collaboration between COMAC and Russia's United Aircraft Corporation, UAC. On paper, the partnership made perfect sense. Russia brought decades of experience in aerospace engineering. China brought manufacturing scale and deep pockets. Together, they committed over $2 billion to the project. The division of labor was strategic. China would fund most of the development and handle final assembly, which would take place in Shanghai. Russia, meanwhile, would provide technical expertise especially in material science, aerodynamics, and engine development. The initial market? China, Russia, and the broader Asia-Pacific region. Combined, these countries represented a significant chunk of future aviation demand, particularly in long-haul routes. For a moment, it looked like a new aerospace superpower was being born, a serious competitor that could end the Boeing Airbus duopoly once and for all, but geopolitical realities soon collided with technical ambitions. The outbreak of war in Ukraine in 2021 dramatically altered the balance. As Western sanctions began to bite, Russia's aerospace industry was redirected toward defence. Engineers and resources that had once been promised to the CR929 were now diverted to military projects. Communication slowed, delays mounted. At the same time, tensions were brewing beneath the surface. China had hoped to gain access to Russia's proprietary engine technology, a move that Moscow resisted. Trust began to erode and by 2022,
the partnership collapsed. Russia officially withdrew from the project. For most observers, this was the end. Without Russia's expertise, critics said, China would never be able to develop a true wide-body competitor. Comac, they claimed, lacked the engineering sophistication and certification capabilities needed for such a complex aircraft. But the critics were wrong. Rather than cancel the project, China rebranded it. The CR929 became the C929. And far from slowing down, the program accelerated. Comac doubled down, pouring resources into independent development and assembling a global supply chain that, while still featuring some international parts, was increasingly Chinese in character. China's ambition was clear, not just to finish the C929, but to finish it on its own terms. When Russia officially withdrew from the CR929 project in 2022, many believed the endeavour would fall apart. The decision followed escalating geopolitical tensions after the Ukraine war as Russia's aerospace resources were redirected toward national defence and sanctions tightened around its economy. Engineers once working alongside COMAC found themselves reassigned to military initiatives and timelines began to slip. But the real fracture came from behind closed doors, where negotiations over proprietary engine technologies broke down. China wanted access. Russia refused. Without agreement on intellectual property rights and with rising distrust, the joint venture collapsed. On the global stage, critics predicted this would be the end of the wide-body dream for China. Yet, what happened next defied expectations. China didn't shelve the aircraft. It seized the opportunity. The CR929 was swiftly rebranded the C929, and Comac made it clear. The program would continue, independently. In one of the boldest moves in aerospace history, China decided to develop and complete a long-haul wide-body jet alone, without Russian support and with minimal reliance on Western technology. This wasn't just about pride. It was strategic. China recognised that dependence, whether on Russian engines or Western avionics, was a vulnerability. So instead of abandoning the project, the country doubled down on self-sufficiency. Comac ramped up hiring, poured more capital into domestic R&D, and accelerated construction of test facilities. The symbolic message was clear. China didn't just want to build planes, it wanted to own the entire aviation pipeline. By late 2023, the first prototype of the C929 had taken shape, and by early 2025, it officially entered flight testing. This milestone not only proved China's determination, but also silenced many skeptics. Suddenly, what seemed like a failed project was being reassessed by Western analysts and media, and not as a niche experiment, but as a real competitor. Beyond optics, the progress was real and measurable. Chinese suppliers began replacing foreign vendors in core systems. While some components, like certain avionics, still came from global sources, Comac increasingly sourced from its domestic aerospace ecosystem. Companies like Avic and the Shanghai Aircraft Design and Research Institute took leading roles in aerodynamics and systems integration. Meanwhile, China restructured its regulatory and certification processes to align more closely with international aviation standards. Leveraging experience from the C919's lengthy certification journey, the Civil Aviation Administration of China, CAAC, began streamlining review procedures to ensure the C929 could eventually compete in global markets. Western observers, who had once dismissed the aircraft as an oversized regional jet, now faced a different reality. The C929 was larger, smarter, and more refined than expected. It wasn't just a scaled-up C919, it was an entirely new design. And as it entered testing, its most compelling feature wasn't even performance. It was independence. For the first time, China had built a wide-body jet, designed for intercontinental travel without relying on Russia or the West. In a world where aviation technology has long been guarded by legacy players, this was a geopolitical statement as much as an engineering milestone. But what gave the C929 its true teeth wasn't just going solo. It was the innovation packed inside. That's where the real disruption began. From its sleek fuselage to its next-generation cockpit, the C929 isn't just a wide-body jet. It's a technological manifesto. Comac's goal wasn't simply to build a plane that flies far. It was to build a plane that redefines how far Chinese aerospace can go. Let's start with the numbers. The C929 boasts a wingspan of nearly 65 metres, longer than the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. It's a twin-aisle, long-haul aircraft designed to carry up to 280 passengers. But raw size isn't the headline. It's what's under the surface. 
One of the C929's standout features is its use of advanced composite materials. Over 50% of the airframe is built from carbon fiber composites, while 15% is constructed from titanium alloys. Compare this with the C999, which used just 12% composites. These materials dramatically reduce weight, increase fuel efficiency, and enhance the aircraft's resistance to fatigue and corrosion, factors critical to long haul economics. Beyond structure, the jet features 10 core systems, ranging from avionics and navigation to hydraulics and electrical distribution. Unlike many commercial aircraft, the C929 integrates a real-time in-flight monitoring system, which offers live diagnostics across all major components. This system enhances safety, enables predictive maintenance, and reduces unplanned downtime, three things airlines care deeply about. The cockpit is designed with next-generation avionics, smart seating, and adjustable lighting. Pilots benefit from digital displays that adapt to visibility and conditions, reducing fatigue and improving control. In the cabin, the C929 shines. Its interior width is 5.5 metres, wider than both the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A350. This translates to more space, broader aisles and better seating configurations, especially for long-haul comfort. But performance is just one piece. China is also building up its supply-side capabilities. Out of nine avionics suppliers for the C-99, four are Chinese, a sharp increase from the C-99 supply chain. Each milestone here represents a step toward full vertical integration, where China can not only design its own jets, but manufacture nearly every component. The design also prioritizes environmental sustainability. With reduced fuel burn and lower emissions, the C-929 aligns with global trends toward greener aviation. Operational cost savings make the aircraft particularly attractive for emerging market airlines who are looking for high-performance jets without the high price tags associated with Western offerings. And then there's the assembly itself. The entire final assembly line is located in Shanghai within China's pilot-free trade zone. This positioning isn't accidental. It provides tax advantages, international logistics access, and tighter security over intellectual property. All of this has not gone unnoticed. Western aerospace media and analysts have shifted their tone. Initially skeptical, many now describe the C929 as a serious threat to Boeing and Airbus, especially in regions where cost efficiency and diplomatic neutrality are key decision factors. But even this impressive feature set pales in comparison to what lies at the heart of the aircraft, the engine. For all of China's innovation in aircraft design, one Achilles heel has always remained, engines. The C999, for instance, still relies on a Western engine the Leap 1C, jointly developed by General Electric and Francis Safran. But with the C929, China is taking a revolutionary leap forward. The plan? Replace foreign engines with its own domestically developed powerhouse, the CJ2000. Developed by the Aero Engine Corporation of China, AECC, the CJ2000 is not just a milestone, it's a mission. For decades, China's aerospace ambitions have been limited by dependence on Western propulsion systems. These engines are expensive, tightly regulated by export controls, and vulnerable to geopolitical friction. The CJ2000 is China's answer to all of that. So what makes this engine so special? For starters, the CJ2000 is designed to deliver up to 35 tonnes of thrust, putting it in the same league as the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 and GE's GNX, both of which power the Boeing 787. It features a fan diameter of 3 metres and a height of 4.55 metres, making it one of the largest and most powerful turbofan engines in its class. This allows it to cruise at speeds of up to 980 km all while maintaining lower noise levels and greater fuel efficiency. Originally intended for the C999, the CJ2000 was temporarily sidelined due to stability and certification concerns. But now, with improvements in design and materials, it's back in the spotlight. China plans to begin flight testing the engine on the C929 by 2029, and if successful, it would mark a watershed moment for Chinese aviation, complete propulsion independence. The implications go far beyond engineering. If China can mass-produce a reliable, high-performance wide-body engine, it breaks the West's monopoly on one of the most sensitive components in commercial aviation. This isn't just about cost, it's about control. Owning the engine supply chain gives China leverage in a market where engines often account for up to 30% of an aircraft's cost and are tied up in restrictive service contracts. The C929 is more than just a plane. It's a line in the sky, 
drawn by China to separate the past from the future. For decades, the commercial aviation industry has been dominated by a duopoly. Boeing and Airbus built an empire that few dared to challenge. But the era of quiet skies is over. With advanced design, homegrown technology, and a game-changing engine, China has not only built a competitor, it has built a contender. And it's not stopping there. From the C919 to the future C949, China is laying the foundation for a new global aviation order, one that is no longer dependent on Western engines, systems, or certification. It won't be easy. It won't be fast. But the C929's takeoff marks a moment the industry cannot ignore. The world's newest wide-body jet didn't just lift off, it sent a message. The skies are open and China is ready to fly. Once again, thanks for watching this video. If you got something out of this, hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. And hey, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Agree, disagree or something in between. I'd love to hear it.